So in this video, we're going to take some of the tools you learned about in the basic grasshopper introduction and apply them to a simple example of associative modeling in architecture through the modeling of a twisting tower. So I have here uh, my Rhino uh, program open and also a window from Grasshopper. And I'm going to start modeling all my geometry within Grasshopper. And the first thing I'm going to do is create an ellipse. So I'm going to do that by double clicking on the, uh, the work plane and just typing in ellipse. This is a shortcut to creating uh, nodes in Grasshopper, which is, is really quick and useful. Alternatively, if you're looking for a specific type of geometry or function, you can go up here and you can find things like the ellipse um, in these folders. But once you know what you want, it's a lot quicker to just type it in. So I'm gonna drop the ellipse node onto the canvas. Uh, all the inputs are already set to defaults, uh, which creates sort of a unit ellipse with both radii at one and the base plane that the global xy plane and you can see a preview of the ellipse here so the first thing we can do is to create some sliders to control the x and y radius of the ellipse so i'll create a slider again with a shortcut if i double click on the uh, canvas i can start typing in the number and it'll automatically create a slider for me so here you can see that I added a 0 0.0 as an extra significant figure, and that will automatically create a decimal-like slider for me, as opposed to if I create, if I just type in 10, it's going to create an integer slider. You can see it's uh, iterating by a whole number. Uh, but what I really want is a decimal point. So if I type in 10.0, it's going to allow me a much finer level of resolution. Okay, so I can start by plugging that into R1. That will change the X radius of the ellipse. I can copy that slider down, plug it into R2. Now I can control both of the radii independently. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to copy this ellipse up to create the top of my tower. Uh, so in Grasshopper, all the geometry is sort of managed in this data flow. It doesn't actually physically exist within Rhino. It's just kind of instanced through this workflow. So here I have an ellipse contained uh, in this node. If I copy something, what I actually want to do is create a node to move the object. And then that moved version will be stored in the moved node, uh, which will be a sort of copy of that geometry. So all the transformations are in the transform tab and you can see the uh, Euclidean transformations here. There's a move and you'll notice that nowhere in here is there a copy command because anytime you do anything with data in Grasshopper, it automatically copies that data into a new, uh, into a new node. So in this case, I'm going to use the move node here and it's asking me in the input section for some geometry and a translation vector. So for the geometry, I'm going to choose my ellipse. And you can see here that there's already a default translation vector. Um, if I hover over the, the T input, uh, I can see that there's a 0, 0, 10 vector. So this defines a movement in the X, Y, and Z directions. And here I'm just moving 10 in the positive Z direction, so just 10 units up. So I could plug in uh, another vector here where I specify the actual uh, direction that it moves. So what I'm going to do is start with a unit Z vector. So I can type that in, start, type a unit. And it gives me these Y, X, Z vectors. And these will basically define a vector moving one unit in one of the three Cartesian coordinate directions. So I can plug that into here. It's going to give me a one unit in the Z direction. And then all of these unit vectors have a, a factor input where I can plug in a slider again to define how much I want it to move. I can, once I have a slider, I can go in, if I double click on the slider name, I have all these options. I can change from real numbers to integers. I can also ch start to change the ranges of the slider. 
So before it was from zero to 10, now I want to change it to a maximum of 20 so I can get higher numbers. And here I can set the actual value of that slider. Okay, so now I have a little bit more height to work with. So now that I have the move in place, uh, I want to introduce some kind of rotation to get my twisting shape of my tower. And just like before, um, when you make a transformation, it just automatically or inherently makes a copy. So now that I have my move geometry in here, I can take that move geometry and I can plug it into a rotation node to create a rotated version of that geometry. So rotation is also in Euclidean. There's uh, this rotate around the plane. Uh, again, it's asking for geometry. So I'm going to go ahead and just pass the move geometry directly into the rotate node. And then the other two inputs of the rotate node are the, the angle of rotation. Uh, and this takes the angle in radians and the base plane of the rotation. In this case, it's the world x, y. Since we're doing everything around the origin, we can keep this as a default. Um, but if we were on to rotate around some other point, we'd have to plug that point or plane into this input. Uh, so here um, you can see that it's defaulting to a 90 degree rotation or in radians, it's half pi. Um, so to make that rotation into an input, um, I'm going to create a slider that goes from 0 to 180 degrees. So it looks like it gave me quite a big range here. So again, I'm going to edit the, the range of the slider. As a shortcut, I can, instead of double clicking on the name, I can right click on the name. And there's the values menu here, and I can just change these values very quickly. So I'm going to give it a maximum of uh, 360. Okay, so now I have the slider going from 0 degrees to 360 degrees. Now I can't directly plug this slider into this angle because, again, uh, this expects you to give it radians. Um, since it's usually easier to work with degrees than radians, just because that's what we're used to, um, Grasshopper has a really useful node called uh, radians, which will take a degree value and automatically convert it into radians. Nothing magical about this, it's just a kind of um, simple formula, but it's a very visual way to see what's going on. Okay, so now if I plug that radian into the angle, I can go through the full 360 turn here. Okay, and again, uh, you can see that instead of just rotating, the existing geometry made a copy of it, which is now stored in the rotate. So at this point, I can go in and select my original moved geometry and I can hide it. And now all I have is my original base ellipse and my rotated final ellipse. And the last step I want to do here is I want to loft between the two ellipses to create the actual shape of my tower. So here I'll use the loft um, node and the loft will just take a series of curves and it'll try to loft between that whole series. So in this case, I can plug in my first ellipse so that won't do anything, obviously, because it's just one curve. But then by holding shift and dragging from my rotated ellipse, I can actually plug in an additional curve. And you can see when I hold shift, I get this green arrow icon. I can plug it into the curve. And now if I hover over, it actually has both of these curves in there. Alternatively, if I didn't hold shift and I just drag it in, it would actually replace that input. So you want to hold shift if you want to add elements to the list. Okay, so now I have my lofted uh, geometry for my twisting tower. And you can see the idea of, of associative design in that for any given final form, I have a sort of a history of the operations that got me there. And I also have a series of parameters that I choose um, to control that geometry. So there's nothing special about these four. It's just the way I built it. And you can imagine uh, for other types of twisting towers, you can have... Um, either less or many more different input parameters that let you drive that geometry. In this case, I can control the aspect ratio of the base geometry. I can control the height of the tower and I can control the overall twist 